Right. Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to you. Um, let's get uh, started. First of all, uh, do the uh, emergency evac evacuation announcement. Should we be required to evacuate the building, would you please leave the building via the nearest ava available exit to the chamber? One there and one there. Our assembly point will be in the public car park at the side of the civic office, a civic suite. Please do not delay your evacuation to collect any belongings. Please do not return to the building until given permission to do so by council staff. Please note that this meeting will be audio recorded and can I ask that mobile phones are switched off or placed on silent, please. Chairman, can I bring up all order? Uh, certainly. Uh, following my uh, departure from the Conservative Party, I have not received a formal written uh, response with regards to my seat on the investment board. Also, on CMS within the Council, I am still registered as an investment board committee member. I have taken advice on that, councillor. Uh, I'm advised that because the seat is a conservative seat, uh, because you're no longer a member of the conservative group, that that seat be becomes vacant. That's the advice I've been given. Yeah. Move on to item one, apologies for absence. Um, I have Councillor Stanley and Councillor Gooding. Substitute members, <coughs> um, I have Councillor Mr Shaw for Councillor Gooding. Okay. Uh, Norman, are members attending? We've got quite a list, if you'd like to put your hands up please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At this point, just before we go on to the minutes, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Hutchins to uh, address the uh, committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to say a few words because I know that members are concerned why we're having this meeting, so I thought it was helpful to set it out at the beginning. Um, and so that members could be appraised of why this, this meeting has in fact been caused. The starting point is that the government has not advised councils to stop calling meetings. Uh, indeed, actually, according to the law, we have no option in order to make decisions to, to have these have to be done by face-to-face -face meetings. Um, so we are taking a risk-based approach as, uh, in accordance with government guidelines and in accordance with uh, it, guidance issued by the Minister for Communities and uh, Housing and Local Government um, that said that uh, necessary council business should be transacted and we will be reviewing all of our agendas going forward in the light of evolving uh, government <coughs> advice. It is important that this is in fact a necessary meeting because it is the uh, next step in a uh, complex legal process which has taken in excess of 12 months to get to this point. Um, the decision that members are being asked to make to tonight, which is to refer the matter to full council towards the end of the month, uh, will enable the council to move forward in that legal process <coughs> and to give commercial certainty to the bidders who are part of that process. If we are not able to make that decision um, um, on, at full council on the 26th, um, then we will have to cross that bridge and, as and when we come to it, but actually creates a legal uncertainty uh, and a, a commercial um, limbo for, for the bidders. It's important to remember members that this evening is not about making a decision to award, it is a decision to um, uh, go simply to the next stage uh, in the procurement process in the expectation that full council will then follow the recommendation of this, uh, of this committee on the 26th of March. Um, if, as I say, if full council cannot happen because of intervening events, then so be it, but we need to have done all we can in order to in short, we are progressing business as usual. I hope that helps. Thank you. Okay, uh, item four, uh, you have received the minute, sorry, Catherine, speak pardon. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to follow up um, uh, some questions with regards to what Angela has brought to us. In light of <coughs> what has actually been brought to us this afternoon by our Prime Minister, who has categorised the situation that we are in at the moment as unprecedented, we are in a time where we're going to have to make some difficult decisions. Some of the allowances that the Prime Minister has come up with this afternoon is a freezing of payment of business rates. On a quick calculation, I reckon that that is going to leave the council short of 2.3... Councillor, what has business rates got to do with this meeting? It is going to affect the risk of this council hugely. It's not relevant to this, this meeting? Yes, it is, because it should... Where our risk register has not been updated for this project, and that is part of the risk that is involved with this project. Okay. And with respect, that should be done before we proceed any further. Chair, thank you. If I can come back on that. The, um, the, the evolving advice is being followed on a daily, if not hourly basis. The um, situation in relation to the decision that's being asked to, to be made tonight is not one of reward. So it is not about making a contractual decision. It is simply about ensuring the next stage in the legal process. So in relation to updating our, both our corporate risk register and the project risk register, then clearly that is absolutely a function of the project team, which will continue um, post uh, this evening's decision and until such time as the project uh, comes to fruition. So that is an ongoing, uh, ongoing situation. Um, I would just commit with the nine members that um, uh, government is in fact moving at, at pace um, and we understand that the Minister is working with the Cabinet Office to draft uh, a new legislation which will enable meetings to be conducted virtually but until such time as that, that legislation is passed by Parliament we have no option but to have face to face meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item four. Uh, you've had copies of the minutes of the meeting held on the 5th of September 2019. Uh, can I have your uh, agreement that they are uh, a true and accurate record, please? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Item, uh, excuse me. <coughs> item five to receive direct declarations of interest. Are there any? Okay. If anything should come up during the meeting, can I remind members to um, let me know at that particular point, please? Okay. Just before we start on item six, uh, I will remind members and members of the public that part of this meeting will be going into P and C, private and confidential. <laughs> at which point, I'm sorry to say, I'll go through the, um, uh, the appropriate <coughs> notice at that point. But at that point, I will have to ask members of the public to leave. Other than two, we have two visiting uh, people with us here today, um, Duncan Blackie and Andrew Rosen, uh, both of the East of England Local Government Association, who have been part of this particular project. Sorry, I, I knew you were here somewhere. Good to see where you were. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I will remind members um, also, as well, I will ask members to refrain from asking questions until the whole um, presentation has been gone through, right at the very end. It is quite lengthy, I, I do apologise for that, but we will take questions at the end. Uh, I will take questions uh, from each member of the committee in turn, and uh, also, as well, I will then uh, consider taking questions from uh, uh, visiting members but please refrain from making any statements or announcements or anything else like that because it will just be questions okay um, so we'll move on to item six and I believe the portfolio holder is going to kick off the thank you chairman um, Rochford District Council is pursuing an ambitious asset strategy with the following objectives. To reduce future costs, which must be in the interest of council taxpayers. To regenerate the local area and facilities for local residents and businesses across the whole of the Rochford District. And to provide fit for purpose office accommodation for council staff and key partners in order to drive efficiencies through a digital first way of working. 
In January 2019, the Investment Board and Council approved the output business case to deliver on these objectives and bring the strategy into reality. The asset strategy is just part of a wider transformation program on the way in which the Council operates. Since I became portfolio holder for Enterprise last year, I have had a clear vision of an optimised asset base that is fit for purpose, enabling quality service delivery for residents and visitors through a sustained programme of transformation from now and for many years to come. The Civic Built Suite Building and the Mill Arts and Events Centre in Rayleigh have served us well, but they are now tired buildings. I am personally committed to retaining a proportionate civic presence in Rayleigh, which will provide facilities to support businesses and residents of the town, as well as touchdown facilities where outreach officers of the council can meet with residents of the town or from where they can work remotely. Equally, the council is committed to continue to provide accommodation to its community partners. Rochford and Rayleigh Association of Voluntary Services, RAVS, Open Adult Counselling Services and Citizens Advice, as well as the groups, clubs and individuals who hire space in the Mill Arts and Events Centre for various important community activities. In Rochford, our current offices are expensive to maintain and put simply, are just not fit for purpose. Our staff deserve better, our residents who visit them deserve better. Myself and the member working group have been quite clear from the outset that the civic pride which residents have in our community facilities, their historical settings and, in particular, the need for attractive modern facilities for public hire is vital for the design of any future building. This is indeed reflected in the output specification that has already been approved by members. I would like to reassure members that a programme of community and stakeholder engagement working as a partner to this council is something we have asked bidders to provide and put money aside to achieve. So, engagement about our plans will be meaningful, detailed and a two-way long, two long before we even get to a planning stage. I hope that residents and councils, councillors across the political divides and across the district will get on board and share in my passion and enthusiasm of the exciting vision of the future, which I suggest will be far superior to what we currently have. Before I pass over to Councillor Sperring, can I take this opportunity to thank very sincerely members of the working group all Rochford District Council officers under the leadership of Matt Harwood White and all our consultant partners for the tremendous support and commitment you are giving to this project. Thank you. Councillor Sperry. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Chairman, members of the Investment Board, following Councillor Wooden's comments, and in support of the Council Officer's comprehensive statement regarding the asset delivery programme which will be presented shortly, I offer this statement on behalf of the Council members who supported and were involved in the working group. In 2018, Asset st Strategy agreed that doing nothing, i.e. just keep going on as we were now with minimum investment, was not an option. <coughs> when we when faced with the increasing mid-term financial strategy budget gap and our continuing commitment to provide value for money services to our residents. The outline business case identified that the preferred option was economically advantageous than to do minimum option since the council would be exposed to the costs of running and maintaining the Mill Arts and Events Centre and the freight house when the leisure contract ends in 2022, plus the cost of repairing and maintaining the ageing Civic Suite and South Street offices. The preferred option agreed in the outline business case proposed a programme of integrated projects. 
redevelopment of the freight house as the council's long-term office accommodation and civic space, redevelopment of the mill site to create a new building community <coughs> facility alongside new houses, commercial and mixed uses, and redevelop South Street sites and the civic suite for housing, commercial or mixed uses. The preferred option was set out in the outline business case which was approved by the investment board on 16th of January 2019 and then by full council on 19th of February 2019. The council then began the procurement process to explore how to deliver the preferred option. The council members on the working group have been a fundamental part of the process which was set up under specific terms of reference to work with officers, professional advisors and the portfolio holder to see this project through. At the start of this project, it would hope there would be cross-party involvement in the working group, but regrettably this opportunity was not accepted and only myself and councillors FD, Lucas Gill and Williams served on this group. As a group, we have had to work through a very strict legal procurement process which has been completely new to many of us and at times has been very frustrating. But this process was strictly followed at the Treasury best practice. We have also brought in external experts, which have included experts in the field of project management, legal, financial and technical. These officers, uh, sorry, these experts have worked fully with officers and the members of the working group. In February 9, 2019, a local partnership health check review endorsed our approach and validated the decisions taken to date at that time. We have also had additional assurances through the East of England LGA, who were commissioned specifically to provide critical friend support to the members working group and have been part of the procurement process throughout. The member working group is confident that the process has been member led and has been robustly managed. We have confidence in the solutions which have been put forward by the preferred bigger, bidder. We can't talk about the specifics of the solutions until a meeting moves to P&C, but we believe that as the member working group, we have done all that was asked of us. The key decisions have been passed through us and then onto formal council governance at investment board or full council or both. Finally, there is still more legal process to be completed, but once this has been done, the member working group has been clear that the council will begin to engage with public and stakeholders, such as users of the building, about these proposals. In the procurement process, the council specified that the preferred bidder would work with us to ensure that, the, the, that this period of engagement was right, wide ranging and meaningful. We want to know what residents think of the solutions and hear their feedback they may want to give. All this will be in advance of the formal planning consultation so that there is a real opportunity to influence the final proposals. The members of the working group are happy to talk in more detail about the preferred bit of solution, but we must move into PNC to do that. As I mentioned earlier, much of this process has been very frustrating for members of the working group because we have not been permitted to answer questions from both fellow councillors and residents. But it is very important that we continue to stay PNC until the legal process has been completed because otherwise the entire procurement process could be jeopardised, leaving the council exposed to potentially huge legal claim. We are pleased to be able to bring this report forward and ask the Investment Board to approve the recommendations set out therein. Thank you, Councillor Sperry. Um, I'd like to add my thanks to the uh, working party or working group. Uh, I know how much work and how much time they have put into this uh, uh, dealing with this. Uh, I can't thank them enough, and I think, uh, uh, and I hope other members will agree with me once you see the presentation. They've done a, an excellent job and. Uh, uh, really have asked those searching questions that were needed to be asked. Um, I think at this point I need to go into, I need to go into P and C. Uh, I re will read the um, exclusion resolution. Members of the public, the following report 
contains exempt information and I would therefore ask you to leave the meeting. It is hereby resolved that under section 100 in brackets A in brackets 4 of the Local Government Act 1972 the public be excluded from the meeting for the following item of business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the schedule 12A of the Act. Members happy with that? Okay. Members of the public, I would have to ask you to on page 6.10. I'm hoping that Cheryl's going to come back in the door saying there's nobody else out there. <laughs> Been quite mean enough to go that far. Searching the building. <laughs> we seem to have lost that. I bet she's got the loo on the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's move on anyway. I'm assuming that there isn't anybody out there. Okay, we've got a number of recommendations on 6.10, uh, page 6.10, item 14.1. I'll take each into recommendation in, in order, uh, one at a time. Uh, I would like a show of hands for each um, as we go through, so I'll read them out, and if you can give me a show of hands, please go. Uh, item uh, recommendation one, to recommend to full council that the outcome of the procurement process as set out in the tender report be approved, ex which is the exempt appendix one. Those in favor? Those against? Any abstentions? One abstention. Item two, to recommend to full council that the preferred bidder is set out in the tender, as set out in the tender report exempt appendix one, be appointed for the asset delivery program. Those in favor? I think that's unanimous. To recommend to item three, to recommend to full council that the final business case exempt, exempt appendix two to be approved. Those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Uh, item four, to recommend to full council to de delegate authority to the asset director, director of assets and commerce. Sorry, start again. To recommend to full council to de delegate authority to the assistant director, assets and commercial, in conjunction with the portfolio holder for enterprise, to enter into negotiations with the preferred bidder, identify to confirm financial arrangements, and to other other terms contained in the tender report, and the FSFBC, and the report back to the full council for final approval. Those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Okay. Item 5. To recommend to full council that £72,500 of unspent project budget be carried forward to the 20, 2021 and to agree the additional budget of £214,900 to be funded from the hard soft infrastructure reserve to fund the resources required to process the programme during 2021. Those in favour? Those against? Any abstentions? Two abstentions. Okay, thank you councillors. That brings the uh, uh, meeting to a close. Thank you to the officers for your attendance and thank you uh, for the visiting members for attending. Um, and please, I must remind you that uh, what you've heard here today is P&C and